So I'm planning a photo trip to Disney World and I'm starting to pack up my bag and I figured this was a great opportunity to tell you about what lenses I have and why I have them. Stick around. Bill posted a video the other day about all of the lenses that he has and what they do and why he has them. And I'm gonna put a link to that in the end of this video. Uh, but I figured this was a great opportunity as I was packing up my gear for my photo trip to tell you about my lenses. I'm heading down to Disney in a couple of days and if you're watching this, I'm either already there now or I was there a long time ago. And I've got four full days planned in the parks. And I've gotta pack up my gear and decide what I wanna bring based on what I'm doing, what kind of shots I wanna get. So this is gonna be about the lenses. For camera bodies, I'm taking my Canon 5D4 and I'm taking my brand new Canon R mirrorless camera. I'm gonna have both of those with me. I'll be shooting mostly on the 5D4, but I'm gonna be using the Canon R as much as I can kind of as a supplement and also to kind of try things out and get more used to it and do some comparisons. See how I like the R compared to the 5D4, see how the image quality is. So I'll be using both cameras while I'm there. But for lenses, let me start by telling you what lenses I'm not bringing. I'm not gonna bring my zoom lenses, my 24 to 70 2.8 and my 70 to 200 2.8. They're great lenses, they're super versatile, but in a situation like this, I don't need really that versatility. I don't need to be able to you know, change my focal length really quickly. I don't need to be able to cover that huge range all in one or two lenses. And at 2.8, even though that's a relatively wider aperture, I would rather give up the versatility of the zooms in favor of the wider apertures that I get from the prime lenses, like 1.4 and 2.0. So basically, all the lenses that I'm bringing, I'm not necessarily gonna carry them around with me the whole time, because really, there's, it, there's too much. There's way too much weight there. Uh, there's way too much bulk to have all the lenses with me. I'll take them all with me on the trip, on the plane, but then I'm gonna leave two or three behind in the hotel or in the car, and really just take what I need for that day or for that half day. The bag I'm using is the Vanguard Alta Access 38X. Uh, I'll put a link to it in the description below so you can check that out on Amazon. It's a great bag for me. It's a messenger style bag, it hangs across my body and it fits a ton of gear in it. Very heavy when it's filled up but it fits a ton of gear and it's a great bag. It has a lot of great pockets and zippers, everything's in the right place. I've been using that for a few years now and I really love it. So for lenses I'm definitely bringing my big 300 millimeter 2.8 lens. I bring it wherever I go. I don't use it as often as I probably should. It's really one of the best lenses I've ever had uh, because of the size and weight. You know, I'm giving up a lot to be able to carry this thing around with me. So I'm bringing it with me because I'm gonna be spending a uh, half day in the animal kingdom. It's great for a place like that, for wildlife especially, to be able to get really up close to the wildlife where, you know, gorillas and tigers and things are you know really far away, I can get really up close with this. But also, it gives a great perspective to things. I've spent a lot of time shooting with this in Magic Kingdom and Epcot over the past couple of years. So I wanna take it to the Animal Kingdom, which I haven't taken it to in a really long time. And it really gives a different perspective. It compresses the scene, and it lets you frame and compose images in a way that you normally wouldn't, because it's really restrictive. Your field of view is very narrow, and you have to kind of arrange yourself in a way and compose your images to be able to get shots with a really narrow focal length like this. And the 2.8 aperture is great. It's really wide, gives a really nice shallow depth of field. So I'm bringing this with me really just for the half day. And when I have that out with me in the half day, I'm not gonna bring my whole bag of lenses with me. I'm gonna have this attached to the Black Rapid strap hanging at my hip, and then I'll have my camera with one other lens. I haven't decided which yet, maybe a 35, maybe a 50. Just my camera with one other lens in it and that's all I'll have out for that half day. Another kind of specialty lens that I'll have with me is my fisheye lens. I use the Canon 8 to 15 4.0 fisheye lens. It's really technically a zoom lens, but I don't use it to zoom at all. You know, at eight millimeters, it's a circular fisheye, so you're gonna get a round image with black all around the edges. At once you get to 14 millimeters, it becomes basically a full frame fisheye lens. Uh, you can fill the whole frame with your image. So I'll use it really only at 14. Every once in a while, I'll shoot totally round. If I need a square image, I'll shoot it that way. But I really just use it as that 14 or 15 millimeters as a fisheye lens. So it's a very unique field of view, fisheye, obviously. I don't use it very often, but it's great to have with me. It's kind of very small and light. I'll kind of have this with me all the time, even though I don't use it that much, because it's great in a situation that comes up where you're like, wow, I can use a fisheye lens for this it's great to have with you. Starting with my next widest lens is the Zeiss 15mm 2.8 lens. Uh, it's a manual focus lens, 
but it's ultra wide. And the reason I ended up getting this one was because I was looking for an ultra wide lens that I can use with filters. And this has the threads on the front where I can screw on circular polarizers. I can screw on neutral density filters right onto the front of this. And I can you know, get all the shots I'd normally get with a conventional wide angle lens with this ultra wide 2.8 lens. The images I get from this are second to none. Like I said, it's manual focus, which at really super wide like this really doesn't make a difference. It's really very easy to manually focus with a lens like this. And ultra wide like this, like 15 millimeters, gets you wider than the conventional zoom lenses, the conventional prime lenses even. It's something that you don't see as much, especially a 2.8. So a 15 millimeter perspective is really very unique. It takes you outside of what you normally see. So moving up in focal length, I have two 24 millimeter lenses. And this is a situation where I'm going to have to decide which one I want to bring with me that day. I'm not going to carry two 24 millimeter lenses around with me all day. So I'll have to decide which one I want. They're both very different and unique lenses. This one is the Canon 24 millimeter tilt shift lens. Uh, it's a very, very unique lens in that it allows me to control the perspective. I did a video about it. I'll put a card here. You can check out the video about the 24 millimeter tilt shift lens. So the other one, the prime lens that I have is the Canon 24 millimeter 1.4 lens. Now this lens is wide angle 24 millimeters, but the aperture is 1.4, which means so it can give you a really shallow depth of field at a really wide aperture, which gives it a very unique look. You know, normally when you're seeing something in a 24 millimeter focal length, it's at the wide end of a 2.8 zoom or a 4.0 zoom, and the depth of field is gonna be a lot deeper than it is with something like the 1.4. So this lens is great for getting wide angle shots uh, with, with something in the foreground, a subject in the foreground, in focus with everything else out of focus in a wide angle, it gives it a nice unique look. It's also great for dark rides. You get on a dark ride with this, it's a nice wide field of view, and the 1.4 aperture lets you shoot at a relatively fast shutter speed without really having to crank the ISO up to anything above 6400 or so. You can get great shots on dark rides with this thing uh, at 1.4, aperture of 6400, and you'll get shutter speeds around 1 50th, 1 60th per second or so. It's great for dark rides. Another nice wide prime lens is the Sigma 35mm 1.4 art lens. I've had this lens for a few years now. It's one of the first in Sigma's art line of lenses, and it really, really is a great lens. If I had one lens that I had to do just for a walk around, you know, I can only have one prime lens with me or one or two prime lenses. I think the 35 millimeter would be one of them. It's a really nice focal length. It's not ultra wide. It's not as wide as like a 24, but it's, uh, it, it's a nice perspective for just walking around. It gives you a nice wide field of view. It's telephoto enough where if you needed to crop, you know, just take a small part of the image and use that. It's good for things like that. Uh, the 35 millimeter focal length is really nice as a walk around lens. And the 1.4 aperture, just like in the 24 millimeter, is great for dark rides also. It's not quite as wide as the 24, but to be able to shoot in dark places at 1.4 with a wide angle lens, a lens like this is really, really great. The image quality I get from the Sigma lenses, this is the first non-Canon lens that I had, and uh, it really opened up my eyes to third party lenses. So the Sigma lenses, the Sigma art lenses are really, really great, which leads me to my next prime lens, the Sigma 50 millimeter 1.4. Now, Bill was just talking the other day about how he sold his Sigma 50 millimeter 1.4 uh, to buy some other lenses. Uh, this lens spends more time on my camera than any other lens that I own. It's 50 millimeters, it's 1.4, the image quality is fantastic, and it, it's not wide angle, it's not telephoto. It's just, I guess you can say it's boring, but to me, I love the normal perspective. I love being able to take photos with something that doesn't have any kind of a, you know, distortion to it. There's no gimmick involved. There's no super long telephoto. There's no ultra wide angle. None of that's involved. You're just getting the image as you see it in front of you. You're seeing what you would normally see standing in front of something with your eyes. The 50 millimeter focal length is gonna give you that. And the 1.4 aperture, at a normal focal length like 50 millimeters gives you a really, really tight, shallow depth of field. And the bokeh on this, the out of focus areas look really beautiful. So this is something that's always on my camera. When my camera's in my bag, the 50 millimeters on it. When my camera's sitting on the shelf in my house, 
the 50 millimeters on it. That's the lens that's always on my camera. It's my starting point. But when I need to go a little bit more telephoto, my next lens is fairly new. It's the Canon 85 millimeter 1.4. Now there's not a huge difference between 50 millimeters and 85 millimeters as far as focal length goes, but this lens has a different feel than the 50 millimeters. It's telephoto enough where you can kind of tell in the images that you're shooting with a telephoto lens. It's great for portraits. It's absolutely great for portraits. It's really like the perfect focal length for portraits if you're shooting like head and shoulders type shots. Uh, it's really nice. The, the 1.4 aperture on an 85 millimeter lens is an ultra razor thin depth of field. So you can get some really unique shallow depth of field shots with this. The bokeh on this is amazing. And this is, other than my big 300 millimeter lens, this is the only lens that I have with image stabilization. So if I'm gonna be shooting in some darker conditions where I have to handhold, I put this thing on and I can shoot, you know, a quarter of a second. If I'm careful enough and I hold my camera steady enough, I can get shots at a quarter of a second that are nice and sharp because of the image stabilization on this lens. It's also great for dark rides if you're gonna be shooting some telephoto stuff on dark rides. The combination of image stabilization and the wide aperture 1.4, I can take some really, really great dark ride shots with this lens. And lastly, one of my oldest and most favorite lenses of all time is the Canon 135mm f2.0 lens. This is really, I keep going back to this time and time again, as probably my favorite lens of all time. The image quality that I get from this lens is unlike anything that I've ever seen. The bokeh, the out of focus areas at 2.0 are just buttery smooth. It really is beautiful. The colors are great. It's super, super sharp on the areas that are in focus. And the 135 millimeter focal length is really long enough that I can use it as a telephoto lens. I can use this in place of my 70 to 200 millimeter zoom. This fits right in the middle of that focal length and it's a 2.0 lens, which means I can open up a stop faster than a 2.8 lens. And the, you know, the image quality with you know, a nice DSLR like the Canon 5D4, I can crop out a small area of the image that I take with a lens like this, and this acts almost as, as a, a super telephoto lens in some cases. I can really get great high quality shots from 135 millimeters, even cropped in smaller than that using this lens. So this is another lens that is always, always in my bag. Um, this is not one of the ones that I'm gonna leave behind. This one's always with me. It's the Canon 135 millimeter 2.0 lens. So that's everything that's gonna be in my bag. Like I said, I'm gonna have to leave two or three lenses behind at any given time. And it's all based on my shooting schedule. I have a list of shots that I wanna get, things that I've been thinking of, things I just missed the last time I was there and now I wanna to try to get those shots. I have a whole list of shots that I wanna get. So before I venture out in the morning, I'm go through my list again, make sure I have the lenses that I wanna have with me, leave a couple behind. It's very hard to do to leave any lenses behind because you know you kinda of grow attached to them. You wanna have them with you at all the time, but it's not worth the size and weight to carry that stuff around with you all day. So I'm gonna finish packing up. I'm heading on down to Disney in a couple of days. I'll be doing some more shooting. I'll be shooting some videos while I'm down there. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna put links to all these lenses in the description below. If you have any questions about any of the lenses or anything, any comments, other lenses that you've tried that you wanna talk about, put them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. So I'm gonna put a link to a video that Bill did last week regarding his lenses, talking about all of his lenses, why he has them, what they're for. And I'll put another link here to a video I did last year about shooting in the rain. I'm sure it's gonna rain while I'm down in Florida. It was a fun video to shoot, so check that out. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.